episodes on partial differential equations, in which we will recap the most fundamental notions of Fourier series. Now, I presume that you've seen Fourier series already before in earlier classes. So, this will just be a short recap of the most fundamental notions. And besides, this will also establish the notation that we're going to use in the following lectures. So, what are Fourier series about? Well, the most fundamental idea is that we can express periodic functions as sums of sine and cosine modes with higher and higher frequencies. For example, if you've got a periodic signal in time, it might be helpful to decompose that signal into sine and cosine modes with higher and higher frequencies. Now, to get us the gist of it, let's first define the Fourier modes, which we are going to use to set up everything. We've got sine and cosine modes, and in our notation, those look as follows. We have got the sine of 2 pi and x over L, where L is a parameter that determines how long is the full swing of the sine. We will see this shortly on the blackboard. And on the other hand, we got the cosine, 2 pi and x over L. N here is a parameter that goes from 1 up to infinity, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Let's see how this looks like, and for that we use an illustration. We first take a look at the Fourier sine modes. The most basic example, of course, is the sine function itself, where the frequency parameter is chosen such that it makes one full swing over the interval from 0 to 1. So what you see displayed here is the function sine of 2 pi x. That corresponds to the case n equal 1. Next, let's add up the case where n equals 2. You see that the number of oscillations now is doubled. We make two full swings. And finally, let's also take a look at the case n equals 3, where we make three full oscillations over the entire interval. And of course, if you increase n further and further, you get more and more oscillations. The cosine modes follow a very similar pattern. First, let's have a look at the case n equal 1, in which case we just get the standard cosine function, parameterized so that we make one full swing over the interval from 0 to 1. So what you see here is cosine of 2 pi x. And next, the case n equal 2, of course, corresponds to a cosine function with doubled frequency. We make two full oscillations, and the case n equal 3 corresponds to a cosine function that makes three full oscillations over the entire interval. And again, if you increase the number n, you get cosine functions with higher and higher frequencies and, the, and more and more oscillations over the entire interval. At this point, we mark, if we set n equals zero, then, well, the sine of 2 pi and x over L is just the sine of 0 for all x, and it's just 0. That's not interesting. But, for example, the cosine of 2 pi 0x over L, that is the cosine of 0, of course, equals 1. And so, it also makes sense to consider the case n equals 0, where we get a constant function. We not only have the sine and cosine modes, but also the constant function additionally. Finally, at this point we can already remark a few properties. Namely, if we integrate from 0 to L as a sine of 2 pi and x over L dx, we all know that equals 0. And similarly, if we integrate from 0 to L the cosine of 2 pi and x over L, this also equals 0. Those are two important properties of those Fourier modes. And before we proceed and see what we can actually do with those three remotes, let's gather a few more of those properties. Those are the so-called orthogonality relations to begin with. So suppose we've got integers m and n going from 0 up to infinity. So m and n equal 0, 1, 2. We then make the following observations about the integrals. Suppose that m and n are different integers. Then, first, the integral from 0 to L of sine of 2 pi mx over L times sine of 2 pi nx over L 
dx equals zero. Second, if m and n again are different integers, then the integral from zero to l of cosine two pi mx over l times cosine two pi nx over l dx equals zero again. And furthermore, for any choice of integers m and n from zero up to infinity, we have got the following relation, namely the integral from zero to l of sine 2 pi mx over l times cosine 2 pi nx over l dx equals zero. We can summarize the first three equations as follows. The first equation tells us that if we integrate the product of two different Fourier sine modes, then the integral equals zero. Similarly, the second equation tells us that if we integrate the product of any two different Fourier cosine modes, then again the integral equals zero. And the third equation tells us that the product of any Fourier sine mode times any Fourier cosine mode has integral zero. Lastly, however, the integral from zero to L of cosine 2 pi nx over L square dx is the same as the integral from 0 to L of sine 2 pi nx over L square dx, which is L over 2. So you might say if you pair up any Fourier sine mode with itself, or any Fourier cosine mode with itself, we get the value L over 2, which is decidedly non-zero. Alright, so what are we supposed to do with those Fourier sine modes and Fourier cosine modes? Well, we can use them to compose functions. That leads us to a Fourier series. A Fourier series is a function of the following form. f of x equal a0 plus the sum starting at n equal 1 up to infinity of a n cosine 2 pi n x over l plus b n sine of 2 pi n x over l. In this context here, a0, a n and b n are coefficients. You can think of the parameters a n and b n and a naught as weights that tell us how strong is the corresponding Fourier mode represented within the function f. With different choices of coefficients, we can compose different functions f. And of course, this will be periodic functions, all of which have period l. Now, we've got an infinite sum, so one might ask whether the sum converges or not. Now, whether the series converges depends on the choice of coefficients, but that shall not be our concern here in the context of this lecture. However, in some circumstances, it's helpful to actually just take a partial Fourier sum. So if we fix some integer capital N, we define Fnx as A0 plus the finite sum starting at N equal 1 going up to capital N of a n times the cosine 2 pi n x over L plus b n times the sine of 2 pi n x over L. For example, if you want to approximate a signal, you could try to compute the Fourier coefficients up to some capital N, up to some order capital N, and then use the partial Fourier sum as an approximation of the original function. Let's take a look at a few examples. The first example is the following Fourier series. f of x equals 1 half plus the infinite sum starting at n equal 1 going up to infinity of the following summons, namely 1 minus negative 1 to the nth power divided by pi times n, multiplied with the nth Fourier sine mode, sine of 2 pi nx over l. In that case, we can read off the coefficients from this formula. On the one hand, we have that a0 equals 1 half, and all the a n, all the coefficients of the Fourier cosine modes vanish, are equal 0. But the coefficients of the Fourier sine modes have the form 1 minus negative 1 to the nth power over pi times n. Let's visualize the partial Fourier series. This periodic function is a very classical example. The Fourier series adds up to a function that periodically switches between the values 0 and 1. 
it alternates between the values 0 and 1. And as you can tell from the animation, as we increase the number of frequencies, as we increase the number of Fourier modes, we get better and better approximations through that superposition of Fourier sign modes. Of course, you can also tell that at the jump points, we get some spurious oscillations. And even as we increase the frequency, that stays on. That is the so-called Gibbs phenomenon. So that example actually indicates already that Fourier series can be used to describe piecewise continuous periodic functions. And by the way, as we can tell from the formula, it seems that the partial Fourier sum only changes every other integer. Now, from the formula, you can already read off that the coefficient is zero whenever the index is an odd number. If you write down the first few elements of the series, you will find that every other element and every other sum in the series equals zero. The second example is a function g of x, which is given as a Fourier series. Again, it has a form 1 over 2 plus the sum starting at 1 going up to infinity. And what we add up is negative 1 over pi times n multiplied with the sine of 2 pi in x over l. And again, it makes sense to take a look at the partial Fourier sums to see what the infinite sum will approximately look like and what function we're actually approximating here. The second example actually is the Fourier series that adds up to the so-called sawtooth function. Periodically, that function raises linearly up to the value 1 and then plummets down to 0 again. Again, as we take a look at the partial Fourier series and include more and more Fourier modes, we see that the superposition of Fourier sign modes eventually asymptotically converges to the desired sawtooth function. Another example that Fourier series can be used to approximate periodic piecewise continuous functions, even in the presence of jumps. And again, we also see Gibbs phenomenon, that at the jump points, we get some over-oscillations. However, those over-oscillations are more and more localized, as we increase the number of Fourier modes. What we can tell at this point is that with Fourier series, we can represent periodic functions that, at least in principle, may have jumps. So, for example, if you've got a periodic function that, let's say, is piecewise continuous but has a few periodic jumps, then it's, it's a good candidate to be represented by a Fourier series. And then it can be also approximated by a partial Fourier sum. Now, the coefficients are quite important. And so it would be nice if we could somehow extract the coefficients from the original function. And of course, there's a formula for that. So how do we obtain the coefficients in the Fourier series? Well, suppose we've got a function f, and we know it can be represented by a Fourier series. Then, the coefficient a0 equals 2 over l times the integral from 0 to l of f of x dx. That's how we get the constant term. And now to the terms for the Fourier sine and cosine modes. The coefficient a n equals 2 over l times the integral from 0 to l of f of x times cosine 2 pi n x over l dx. And similarly, the coefficient b n equals 2 over l times the integral from 0 to l of f of x sine 2 pi n x over l dx. The same, by the way, is also true if the original function f is replaced by some partial sum f capital N, provided that the coefficient index n is less than or equal capital N. Lastly, we take a look at Fourier series in a few special cases that will be particularly relevant in our discussion of partial differential equations. So, suppose that f of x is a function with period L. 
we take a look at two special cases, namely an odd periodic function and an even periodic function. If f is an odd function, that is, f of negative x equals negative f of x, then the Fourier series of f has a special form. The Fourier series can be written as f of x equals the infinite sum starting at n equal 1 going up to infinity of bn the sine of 2 pi and x over l. That is, the Fourier series of a periodic odd function is a pure Fourier sine series. There are no cosine modes. On the other hand, if f of x is an even function, that is, f of negative x equals f of x, then the Fourier series takes the following form. f of x equals a naught plus the infinite sum starting at n equal 1 going up to infinity of a n times cosine 2 pi n x over l. Alright, that finishes our discussion of the Fourier series, our recap of the Fourier series. And in the next lecture, we see how uh, Fourier series can help us to solve the one-dimensional heat equation over a finite interval. See you in the next lecture.